integrity 1%. Now. Welcome back to Marvelous Videos. I'm Rylan, and this is To Marvel Fans. The whole idea of an average person being given powers is a household concept. But then again, when it comes to Nick Fury, he is a lot more than that. As a creation of Jack Kirby and Stan Lee, Nick Fury has been a significant part of Marvel and its subsequent cinematic universe. The character first appeared in the first issue of Kirby and Lee's World War II war comics, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, back in May of 1963. And it's only fitting to say that Fury since then has come a long way. The master of espionage, who in all probability is one of the greatest strategic minds in the world, will have actor Samuel L. Jackson reprising his role as Fury in Kyle Bradstreet's upcoming TV miniseries, Secret Invasion, as well as Nia DaCosta's superhero flick titled The Marvels. The latter is scheduled for a November release later this year. And of course, this brings us to the main focus of today's episode, which of course is Nick Fury. And as we delve deeper into his origin story, you can be rest assured that we will be exploring many things, from how the Second World War soldier became the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. to Fury losing his eye, a lot is in store for you. So, we suggest watching this video till the end to know everything there is to know about the intense and mysterious Nick Fury. Are you ready? Well, let's get rolling then. But before we get into our explanation, we do have one very small request. If you like our content, then please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is just one small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thanks! Now, let's begin. Nick Fury's Origins Explored Born to Jack and Catherine Fury during the Great Depression, Nicholas Joseph Fury grew up in Hell's Kitchen. Nicholas's father, Jack, was a World War I fighter pilot and was reportedly part of combat missions until 1916. After his wife Catherine died, Jack remarried, only to die shortly later and leave his children Nick, Jacob and Don all under the care of his second wife. Fury's childhood memories include him playing with the mutt, catching up on the latest afternoon flicks with his childhood friends, and let's not disregard his occasional fights with the rival Yancey Street Gang. Fury also shared an affectionate relationship with his younger brother Jacob, and the duo would always play dress up on their rooftops. But having said that, Fury also had quite a bit of a bad temper, which is precisely one of the reasons why growing up he never had a stable job. Fury's best friend around that time was Red Hargrove. And together, in the hopes of hankering some adventure, the duo left the neighborhood and bought an airplane to perform fearless wing walking and parachuting acts. This helped them earn a certain standard of living. And by 1940, they had their own show in England. Fury and Hargrove were training the British foot soldiers on how to parachute out of a plane, when their actions caught the eye of Lieutenant Sam Sawyer, who, impressed by the duo's parachuting skills, eventually had them enlisted in the army. Marvelous Story Arcs of Nick Fury The Death of Hargrove After a couple of special missions, Fury had to undergo nine weeks of basic training at Fort Dix, under the command of Sergeant Bass. Of course, Bass took an instant disliking towards Fury, and while it was true that the latter met quite a few hurdles along the way, it soon became clear that Fury was born a natural soldier, as well as a leader. This naturally resulted in Fury passing the training with flying colors, and he was seen reuniting with Hargrove. With the two stationed at Schofield Barracks in Hawaii, their reunion took a tragic turn, courtesy of the military ambush by the Imperial Japanese Navy Air Service on Pearl Harbor. Hargrove was killed during the attack, and he breathed his last in the arms of his best friend. Fury vowed to take revenge against the Axis powers and obliterate them from the world map. Handpicked Squad of Highly Trained Soldiers Fury was sought out by Sawyer and assigned to lead a Ranger Squadron of the U.S. Army. To all of you wondering, yes, this is the same squad that would later become famous as the Howling Commandos. It goes without saying that Fury, along with the highly trained band of soldiers, undertook some of the most dangerous missions and even fought alongside Captain America as well as Bucky against Axis villains such as Red Skull and Heinrich Zemo. Fury and his commandos were part of a horde of missions that extended from deep raiding missions behind the enemy lines as well as undercover work to some major home front action. It's during this time that Fury ran into Baron Wolfgang von Strucker. No points for guessing that the latter suffered an embarrassing defeat at the hands of the former, and this is what led to Strucker becoming one of Fury's most dangerous enemies, one that always sought revenge. It is also essential that we mention Fury's friendship with Dum Dum Dugan, whom he had met during a special mission to Holland, as well as meeting Gabe Jones. Jones, along with Dugan, would eventually follow Fury to S.H.I.E.L.D. How did Fury get a patch on his eye? Be it on the page or the screen, the universal question that every Marvel fan out there had, and for a very long time may we add, was what really happened to Fury's eye? Like, how did he end up with the eye patch? Of course, the two mediums have the story handled in their own different ways. While the Captain Marvel movie held the Flurk and Goose accountable for Fury's lost vision after the alien creature scratched him, the comics, on the other hand, had the origin of Fury's lost eye dealt with in a much more fascinating way. Now, there's no denying that Fury was a great 
sergeant, and it's only fair that we categorize him as this indestructible sergeant. But there are two separate injuries that honestly did change his life. As this indomitable soldier, he was always able to get most of his commandos to safety after every mission, but that doesn't mean that he got out of situations unscarred. Well, let's dig deeper into how Fury actually lost his eye. As seen in the 27th issue of Stan Lee and Dick Ivers, Sergeant Fury and his Howling Commandos, a grenade was thrown at Fury and his commandos. But of course, Fury caught it in midair, and while he did toss it away, he didn't do so fast enough, and the grenade blew up, causing fragments of it, mainly the shrapnel, to injure his left eye. That was the first injury. The second one had Fury stumbling into a French landmine and getting caught in the explosion. Naturally, this had Fury severely injured. And while he was found and saved by the scientist Berthold Sternberg, in reality, the scientist experimented on Fury as a test subject. He was injected with the Infinity Formula a longevity serum that saved his life and dramatically slowed down his aging process. Of course, the serum came at a cost. He had to get an annual booster, otherwise it would lead Fury to age almost 60 years within a night. To top things further, even Sternberg took advantage of Fury's delicate situation and had him blackmailed into paying vast sums of money to continue his annual dosage. The Aftermath of World War II Following World War II, Fury was a part of several mop-up missions with his commandos before he got hired by the Wartime Intelligence Agency Office of Strategic Services, or the OSS, which was followed later by the CIA. The Howling Commandos were mainly seen joining forces with both Fury and Sawyer in a mission that required them to tear down an MIG airbase. Mind you, this was the operation which earned Fury the rank of second lieutenant for his outstanding service. Of course, Fury didn't stop at that. His involvement while combating the communist Chinese forces had him work his way up to general. With time, Fury was contacted by the newly established SHIELD, one that was equipped with the latest technology by Tony Stark, and offered the post of director. No points in guessing that Fury accepted the offer. And in due course, he also had his closest friends Dugan and Jones recruited into the organization as well. Eventually, Hydra became the organization's main rival, one that was created by Fury's arch-rival from World War II, Varen Wolfgang von Strucker. Under Fury's command, SHIELD emerged as the leading covert operations agency in the world, and even formed strategic alliances with superhero teams such as the Avengers. Please know that while S.H.I.E.L.D. did this, Fury ensured that his organization maintained its independence. Fair to say that Fury ended up being the middleman between the government and the superheroes, especially when a crisis demands to be dealt with. Disbanding and Rebuilding S.H.I.E.L.D. While the organization did flourish, and Fury made it to the point to annihilate terrorist organizations, a security breach by a group of life model decoy, LMD androids, led to Fury disbanding his agency and rebuilding it from scratch. This made the organization much more streamlined, so that Fury could personally keep a watch on the unit and safeguard it from further corruption. Also, this agency, which previously stood for Supreme Headquarters International Espionage Law Enforcement Division, became known as Strategic Hazard Intervention Espionage and Logistics Directorate. After this, as time passes, the Punisher gets captured and is kept imprisoned in the Floating Shield headquarters, also known as the Helicarrier. A deranged Punisher not only manages to escape from there, but also ends up shooting Nick Fury dead when the latter attempts to stop him. While the death of Nick Fury did come as a shock, especially in the superhero community, it was revealed that the Punisher's victim in reality wasn't Fury at all, but a life model decoy. Fury came back with a bang and took over the organization once again. It was also around this time that Fury had personally personally enlisted the services of a number of superheroes, ranging from Captain America to Black Widow. A wall from Shield. After Latveria launched a massive counterattack, Fury was replaced by Maria Hill, who became the new charge of Shield. As for Fury, he was left with no choice but to go into hiding, and it was while he was hiding that he learned of Contessa Valentina Allegra de la Fontaine, not only plotting against him, but also planning to kill him. Of course, this ended in Fury killing her. Now, for those of you wondering what happened, here's what exactly took place. The Skrulls had sent an imposter of Contessa de la Fontaine, and it was an imposter that was killed by Fury. Maria Hill, on the other hand, was warned by Fury not to trust anyone about the oncoming threat of the Skrull race. Fury was next seen resorting to the aid of his friend, Daisy Johnson, to assemble a new team of superhumans to help fight the Skrull invasion. He addressed the new team as commandos, and had them undergo extensive training for months. After the Skrulls attacked, Fury and his team managed to gain victory over some of them, and simultaneously saved many initiative heroes. Fury also had Deadpool work for him, and had him forged to join the Skrulls with the sole aim of gaining more information on how to stop them. 
them. Ultimately, Fury was joined by the rest of the heroes, and together, he emerged victorious against the army of the Super Skrulls. But when Dugan and the real Contessa greeted Fury, he simply teleported away, along with his whole team, without uttering a single word to them. Now, after these events of the invasion, Fury had gone underground once again, this time along with his team. Imagine Fury's anger when he discovered that S.H.I.E.L.D. was being covertly controlled by Hydra all this time. This had him gather his commandos to counter the new Hydra threat, as well as bring down Norman Osborn's hammer. However, defeating two rivals, with each having massive armies at their disposal, Fury ended up taking the aid of the Howling Commandos PMC, one that was formed by 1,200 former S.H.I.E.L.D. agents that had simply turned down Osborn's agency. Things eventually escalated to a level where Osborn was seen shooting Fury in the head, but then again, it was a life model decoy and not the real Fury who was shot. The Murder of Uatu the Watcher We have all heard of the phrase that states that change is the only constant. This brings us to the events of the original Sin, that has Fury aging at a ludicrously fast speed, when the longevity serum within his body gets depleted. Aware that he is approaching his end, Fury decides to leave behind his legacy. The storyline discloses how Fury, years ago, had been given the duty to become this invisible force for justice, one that eventually led him to wipe out all threats from Earth. No wonder, Fury wanted someone to take over his job, and therefore, he thought of a plan that would assemble all of the heroes that he found ideal for the job. However, things take a completely different turn when Uatu the Watcher gets raided by villains. We are stressing about the cosmic entity getting shot and one of the eyes being pulled out. With Fury pleading to Uatu for information against the perpetrators, the latter chose to remain silent. This has Fury shoot the Watcher and take out the remaining eye of the cosmic being, after which he went after the villains, but not before sending an anonymous message to the heroes that he considered worthy of taking his place. The band of heroes eventually figured out what really happened to the Watcher, and with the help of the LMD of Fury that Fury himself had deliberately placed amongst the heroes, they were able to figure things out. But the LMD was shot by the Winter Soldier, or in other words, Bucky Barnes, who by then had realized that it was Fury who was in control of everything. The heroes eventually came face to face with the elderly Fury on one of the latter's star bases when the villain Orb, upon his discovery, was taken there. Of course, the heroes were shocked by Fury, and some even questioned his work. Fury attempted to elucidate the real cause, but that led to a fight between him and the others. The battle took all of them to the Watcher's Citadel, where Fury confessed that it was him who had killed Uatu. As a final act of heroism, Fury took the eyes and dropped himself on it like it was some kind of grenade. This was followed by a huge explosion, and when all the heroes looked, it looked like Fury, along with major parts of a Watu's lair had been destroyed. While the heroes, saddened by the loss of their friend, came back to Earth, a mysterious figure emerged from the rubble. No points for guessing that it was Fury. Instead of getting killed in the explosion, he got absorbed by the energies. It was a new Fury, now cosmically charged up, and he chose to remain on the moon. By the looks of it, he seemed to have taken the place of a Watu as the new Watcher, or should we say, the new Guardian of the Earth. Nick Fury's Appearance in the Marvel Cinematic Universe Meet Nicholas Joseph or Nick Fury, the world-famous spy, the former director of S.H.I.E.L.D., and the founder of the Earth's Mightiest Heroes, the Avengers. Fury began his career with the U.S. Army and worked his way up to the rank of Colonel before his honorable discharge. Fury had a stint with the CIA before he joined S.H.I.E.L.D. in the hopes of battling the most dangerous enemies of Earth. Of course, his scope of enemies broadened upon crossing paths with Carol Susan Jane Danvers, who is more popularly known as Captain Marvel. Fury and Danvers are reported to have battled the elite military task force, Star Force, who was led by Jon Rog. It's also around the same time that Fury took an instant liking to the Flurkin Goose, who ended up permanently blinding Fury's left eye by scratching him. Fury kept the reason of his injury a secret, often calling it classified, and that it happened in the line of duty. Fury, upon getting promoted as the director of S.H.I.E.L.D., had his focus primarily on the Avengers Initiative. The goal was to assemble every powerful being so as to aid S.H.I.E.L.D. and safeguard the Earth from extraterrestrial threats after Fury's personal encounters with the Kree and the Skrulls. Fury eventually had on board Iron Man as well as Captain America as part of the Avengers Initiative. Well, there was an instance when Loki invaded Earth and effectively managed to brainwash an entire army in order to lay his hands on the cube. This is when the Avengers were called, and with the help of Fury, they were able to defeat Loki and prevent the whole city of New York from getting nuked. It was after this victory that Fury had Captain America recruited as a S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. As a direct response to the Battle of New York, a secret S.H.I.E.L.D. operative known as Project Insight was 
was initiated, and Fury was seen working on it so as to predict further threats. However, when Fury started to suspect that something was not right with the new operation, he found himself becoming the target of the Winter Soldier. This coerced Fury into faking his own death and going into hiding. Upon learning that Hydra had plans for using Project Insight in an attempt to enforce a new world order, Fury assembled Captain America, Black Widow, Maria Hill, and the Falcon to destroy the project. With Fury and his allies successfully stopping Project Insight, he went into hiding once again in the hopes of hunting down the remaining Hydra cells. Cut to 2018, Fury was seen functioning with his hand-picked crew. He was amongst the countless victims in the blip who had managed to send a distress signal to Captain Marvel before disintegrating himself. It was in the year 2023 that Fury was resurrected by Hulk in the blip and he attended the funeral of Tony Stark after he sacrificed himself in the ultimate battle. After realizing Peter Parker's true identity as Spider-Man, Fury was given the task of delivering the Edith glasses to him, but instead made up his mind to stay on vacay. So much so that he had even assigned Skrull General Talos and his wife Soren to masquerade as him and Maria Hill respectively on Earth and also deliver the glasses to Spider-Man on behalf of him. And after discovering that Talos and Spider-Man were entangled in some kind of crisis in Europe, Fury made up his mind to end his galactic vacation alternate versions of Nick Fury. In Marvel 1602, the 8-issue comic book limited series, Fury appears as Queen Elizabeth's chief of intelligence, Sir Nicholas Fury. And in case you were wondering, his character was inspired after the Queen's principal secretary, Sir Francis Walsingham. In the three-issue miniseries, Avatar's Covenant of the Shield, Fury is Regent Nicholas, one who is seen guarding the throne of Avalon with his elite squad. As seen in the Earth-X timeline, Fury is dead, but there are still a number of life model decoys that are still operational and continue to battle against against the Cold War era communists. In Garth Ennis and Derek Robertson's six-issue miniseries Fury, the character appears as this exceedingly weary Cold War veteran who is not able to deal with the modern world. Fury is seen entangling in a clash with his old Hydra enemy and the new Ministral Shield. In House of M, Fury had vanished. When he was found, he was given the job of being a drill instructor, mainly because of his talents, only to be assassinated by one of his very soldiers. As seen in the Marvel Mangaverse, Fury is seen accountable for the death of 99% of the superhuman. As seen in the five-issue limited series Marvel Zombies, Fury gets devoured by the Fantastic Four, who have become zombies. In Marvel Comics 2, Fury is successfully running S.H.I.E.L.D. In Mutant X, Fury is the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D., which happens to be an anti-mutant police force. Finally, in the Ultimate Comics, Fury's look, as well as his personality, resembles that of Samuel L. Jackson, and he would eventually play the live-action adaptation of the character in the MCU. What makes Nick Fury so formidable? Nick Fury doesn't possess any real superpowers to appear formidable. He is in peak human condition, a master tactician, an accomplished strategist, and an expert when it comes to martial arts. Here, we'd like to stress on him being a heavyweight boxer, a black belt recipient in Taekwondo, and let's not miss out on his brown belt in Jiu Jitsu. Oh, he is also an expert when it comes to armed combat. Besides these, he is also an advanced military operator, an expert marksman, highly proficient in wielding weapons and driving all sorts of vehicles, including tanks tankers, submarines, helicopters, and even trains. Also, his association with S.H.I.E.L.D. makes him highly powerful and gives him access to some of the most advanced technology and weapons in the world. Last but not least, Fury's transformation into the Cosmic Watcher allows him to see into the past, present, as well as the future of different timelines. Nick Fury's Appearances in Other Media In Rod Hardy's 1998 TV superhero flick, Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., David Hasselhoff played the role of Nick Fury. Voiced by Philip Abbott, Fury appeared as a guest character in Iron Man the Animated Series. He also appeared in Spider-Man the Animated Series, voiced by Abbott and Jack Angel. Nick Fury also appeared in the Spider-Man Unlimited series when he was voiced by Mark Gibbon, and the X-Men Evolution series, voiced by Jim Burns. Alex Desert voiced Fury when he appeared in the 2009 animated series Wolverine and the X-Men. Dean Redman took on the role of Fury when he appeared in the 2009 3D CGI animated series Iron Man Armored Adventures, and he also appeared in the animated series The Superhero Squad Show, being voiced by Kevin Michael Richardson. Next, there's The Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes, that has Alex Desert once again voicing Fury. Ultimate Spider-Man featured Chi McBride voicing Fury, and Marvel Disc Wars The Avengers has Isao Igiwa providing the voice of Fury in Japanese, with John Eric Bentley in English. Nick Fury's appearance in the upcoming television series, Secret Wars. Everyone is eagerly awaiting for Kyle Bradstreet's upcoming TV series to finally have Fury return to the screen and Marvel's ever-growing cinematic universe as the one-eyed S.H.I.E.L.D. agent. Based on Brian Michael Bendis and Leno Francis Yu's comic book crossover storyline, also titled the same, Secret Invasion, will follow Samuel L. Jackson as Fury, gearing himself up for a final battle against the Skrulls, especially with the latter having invaded Earth in the guise of prominent MCU figures. As 
seen in the trailer, Fury is quite hell-bent on fighting this war alone, which means that the series will have plenty of action in store for all the action hounds out there. Secret Invasion is scheduled for a June release this year, and is reported to consist of six electrifying episodes. Marvelous Verdict Well, with this, we finally come to the end of our episode today. This was the origin story of the bearer of many classified and worldwide security secrets, the one and only Nick Fury. And with a special emphasis on how he ended up getting a patch on his eye, we'd like to know your thoughts about the bold and pragmatic Nick Fury. So please, let us know what you fancy the most about this character in the comment section below. And of course, don't forget to leave us a like, and subscribe to never miss out on any of our videos. Until next time, have a good one, and be safe.